where our next guest says it was spite that threw her into the male dominated world of high altitude mountain climbing. That's right. But it took something more to become the second American woman to climb what is considered one of the most dangerous mountains in the world. And joining us now is Lisa Thompson. Not only did she conquer K2, she defeated cancer as well. Her upcoming book is titled Finding Elevation, Fear and Courage on the World's Most Dangerous Mountain. I'm so excited to welcome her to the Morning Blend. Good morning to you. Good morning, Tiffany. I'm super happy to be here. Oh, it's so nice to meet you, Lisa. You've got to talk a little bit about first. Let's get to the, the book itself and talk a little bit about finding elevation and the book and what you wrote and what inspired you to start writing. Oh, my gosh. So I wanted to write since I was a little girl um, and I had a hard time finding a topic that really stuck. I started to write about like dogs that had climbed mountains and it wasn't until I got cancer in 2015 and I used the process of journaling to sort of get me through that. It was super cathartic for me. And at the end of that, and at the end of all the changes that sort of ensued in my life after cancer, I thought like, this is something I want to share with other people. And that eventually turned into the book, Finding Elevation. Wow. I mean, we're looking at some of these just stunning pictures and to know <laughs> you've beat cancer, you've you know, you're the, the, the second woman, um, you know, to, to do this world's second highest mountain. Let's, let's talk a little bit about your, your timeline. When you were doing these climbs, were you still battling cancer? Had you already defeated it? And what kind of themes are popping up in your writing? Yeah, so that's a great question. I was diagnosed in 2015 at the beginning of the year, and I had made the decision um, shortly before my diagnosis that I was going to climb in the Himalaya for the first time. So the Himalaya is this huge mountain range that bisects Asia, and it contains most of the highest mountains in the world. Um, to For me, a fledgling mountaineer back then, to be able to be ready to climb one of those mountains was just surreal. And it was very important to me that I take that next step in my climbing career. But cancer got in the way of that. So shortly after I made that decision and just as I was starting to train and get prepared, I received the diagnosis that I had breast cancer. I am a very um, motivated and sometimes spiteful person. And so I was determined and looking back in hindsight, this is probably not the best perspective to have, but I was determined not to let cancer dictate my priorities. And so it was very important to me that I do everything I possibly could to make it to that mountain that year. <clears throat> the name of that mountain is called is Montesluz. And I didn't summit Montesluz that year. I came close about 3000 feet from the summit and there was an avalanche that turned my team and I around. And when I got back home and I sort of reflected on that climb, I really believe that mountains teach us things. I think that nature teaches us things. And so that climb, though not successful by maybe a standard measure, taught me that life is fragile and that it is up to each of us to define the lives that we will live. And so when I got home from Montesluz and settled in a little bit, had those realizations really just rush over me, I decided that why wouldn't I want to climb the highest mountain in the world? And so about six months later, I decided to climb Mount, I, I attempted Mount Everest. During that time, I had several surgeries. I finished cancer treatment. Um, all of my doctors, I was very transparent with all of them. They all thought I was a little bit wacky. Um, we're all sort of friends now. And so it's interesting to get their very candid and transparent thoughts about um, my decisions, but they were very supportive. And that support from all of my doctors, everyone who provided care for me when I had cancer was so, so important to me. And when I got to the summit of Mount Everest that year in 2016, all I felt was gratitude. Mm. Just an incredible feeling of like all of the people that had supported me to get me that far. And certainly that journey through cancer that year was a huge, huge part of that. Lisa, that's beautiful. And I, I know that there's a woman watching who's battling cancer right now. And she is hearing you and thinking, my body is exhausted. My body can't, you know, be pushed 
And I know you say you've learned so many things from the mountains, including listening to your intuition, confronting fear, patience, resilience, all these things that you've kind of given me as little pieces of things you've learned. What do you want to say to that woman who's watching, who may be in those, <sighs> in that position to say, I, I want to live a life after this diagnosis? Yeah. I, there's so many things I want to say to that woman and to that, that woman and anyone overcoming a big obstacle. I have been there. There were days where I could not get out of bed. I had no motivation and a couple of things really helped me. One was to have a goal, to have this vision in my mind of what I wanted my life to be like, what I wanted my body to be like, the kind of person that I wanted to be. And there were days where I focused on that goal solely and had to just take one tiny, tiny step towards that goal and keeping those, you know, one step after another, after another. And some days it was, I was going to get out of bed and wash my hair. Yeah. And that was going to make me feel like a human being and feel like a woman and feel good about myself. And other days I could go for a walk in beautiful mountains that I loved. So I think having that goal just always present and always remembering and thinking about what I wanted my life to be like is what helped me stay positive and push through those really tough moments. That's beautiful. It's triumphant. It's a survival story and it's true resilience. So I'm going to share the information for your book again. Lisa Thompson, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. Take care, Tiffany. You too. And again, Lisa Thompson's book is called Finding Elevation. It's going to be released in January of 2023.